What's up guys, it's B-Ball and again, day two of the group stages of the International have ended just a moment ago and some very interesting results, some results I expected but some results I didn't expect did occur this past day so enough with the sort of really shitty introduction let's get right into the results of day two so in this day I think a lot of my predictions did come true a lot of teams did make a comeback but some teams did fall out of favor so if we look at the results after the first day I read the C9 would fall pretty drastically because I thought a lot of their easiest opponents were on day one minus EG I thought that IG would remain near the top I thought VT would be near the middle Navi would remain near the top Navi US would fall Liquid would fall and newbie along with EG would climb I thought Fnatic given their schedule would probably remain near this place Alliance would definitely climb and the rest of the teams DK would move up because they're just too damn good to stay down there but I don't know Empire were not looking too sharp after day one and they had a lot of tough competition ahead of them me all I predicted LGD and Arrow to stay near the bottom along with the mouse because their style I thought would be really good for best of one but if you can counter apparently then they seem to be in a lot of trouble. So we'll just go over the results right now as we can show the current results. And hey, some interesting results did just happen. So Vici, which I were not expecting to do so well, are now 7-1. and one. And this is widely regarded as the weakest of the Chinese quad powerhouses. Of course, the quad powerhouses are considered Newbie, DK, IG, and Vici. Vici and last... IG along with DK and Vici among the top three. Maybe Newbie like, or not Vici. Um, maybe IG and v DK would be tied at the top. Newbie would be slightly below, and Vici would be below that because they don't really play super well against other Chinese teams. But fortunately for Vici, I don't think they've really played against too many Chinese teams thus far. But they've sure shown a lot of composure, beating the competition, and they did on, on the back of some very stable picks. They like to pick up a very very annoying hero for Sylar, whether it be a Morphling. Uh, other heroes of that nature. I, usually Morphling, more often than not. They like to get some stable hero for Super, most likely Razor, and they like to just roam around with their supports early and apply a lot of pressure with the Shadow Shaman, and they like to pick Dire quite a bit, and a reoccurring theme for all the successful teams has been that they indeed like to pick Dire because the Roshan advantage is just so very strong to deal with. DK, after starting 2-3, and three, bounced back in style, 6-3 and three now, beating some decent competition, but I can't really say for sure who they beat, to be exact. They went undefeated, so they beat Arrow, they were supposed to beat them, they beat Cloud9, I think they were supposed to beat them, but they are, Cloud9 is definitely a very tough opponent. Empire was actually a reasonably close game, DK did struggle, but DK did beat them, and I think DK were supposed to beat them. So a lot of matches that DK were supposed to win, and they are doing just that, so all the props to them, and that's the and that's the best way to advance. You have to beat the teams you're supposed to beat and beat the teams you're not supposed to beat, but if you don't beat them, then at least play them very hard. IG slipped a little, as in their last match, they did, they did lose to Empire, and they also lost to some other team. I can't remember. They lost to Navi US against Naga Siren Strat. So it looks like IG are struggling a bit against teams that are taking them out of their comfort zone, e.g., after a three and two day went five and three. Navi after three and one went five and three. Titan went five and three. Cloud Nine did go one and three after the first day. And I think a lot of Cloud Nine's opponents are toughest opponents are still ahead of them, so I don't know, I think Cloud Nine might drop off a bit. Liquid five and four. Looks like they've been losing to some of the easier opponents that they lost to Arrow who has been really putting on a surprising showing, and Liquid still have some tough points ahead of them. They have to face Alliance, who have regained a lot of momentum. Newbie 5-5, five and five, but they've just been all over the place. It's really hard to call how new Newbie matches go. And meanwhile, this bottom three place, only I think Navi US will remain down here. But I could been playing a lot of their tough opponents, but every team in this tournament has been tough. But still, against teams like Mouse, Arrow, I think Fnatic did lose against LGD, but... I think both of these teams have to play against both of these two teams, and those should be relatively straightforward wins for the both of them. So, just going on to the bottom of the results, Navi US, I, I thought that their day one was looking a bit too good to sort of hold up as they went 
something. I think they were three and two after day one, or maybe three and one. So they went one and four, or one and three, something pretty bad for Navi US. And they start to face a couple of tough points. They have to face Navi. They have to face Alliance, or maybe they already played Alliance. I can't be sure. So it's not looking good for Navi US. Empire. Two and three, day one, three and six. I think they're the team I'm a bit, I'm the most disappointed in. But Empire is still a relatively new team, competitively speaking, and they have a lot of room to grow. But still, this performance, they can't be happy with it. They did beat IG, but so far their drafts sort of, uh, they're okay. But sometimes one or two mistakes just get capitalized. And the Empire, they fight better than any other team, but. Oftentimes they do get behind pretty early and on the back of the fight they can make up, make up a lot of ground But they can't just keep winning Perfectly executed fights game after game and we saw in the DK match Empire were winning the fights But they're losing the war of attrition against the Tinker Shadow Shaman lineup and eventually they just got pushed in despite winning the fights so Empire have a flaw and other teams have been going to exploit it We'll see if Empire can sort of fix that resolve because otherwise they might be knocked out before the playoffs really truly begin. You know, LG, they made a nice recovery. They beat, I think, Team Liquid. They also beat a couple of other teams. They beat Arrow in day one. And I can't remember the other team they beat. But they were looking reasonably sharp. Mouse, again, struggling quite a bit. Arrow, showing some signs of life in the last two games. They start out 0 and 8. Then they managed to beat Liquid as well as Navi and A. So they've been looking pretty sharp in the last two matches, but still it's going to be a huge struggle to get them out of the cellar as they start to face some very solid teams like Navi, Alliance, yeah. So I'm going to just look at the meta ratings and for the top Chinese teams, a reoccurring theme has been taking place. Pick Razor, pick Rasta, and then just go to work. Get the early mech, push down with Shao Shan, get Dire if you can, so you can secure Roshan, Snowball out of control. But I think the team that's sort of a bit more willing to deviate from that playstyle has been Team DK. They've been running some support juggernaut strategies. Uh, Neil and IG, they've shown that they struggle a bit when they don't sort of really get the picks that they want. In the last matchup against Empire, IG made it close for a bit, but Empire sort of steamrolled them near the end because Empire smartly decided to ban out that Shao Shaman while IG were on the dire side, and IG didn't ultimately have a strong Roshan lineup. You know, Vici, 7-1. I haven't really been watching too many of the games, but you gotta be impressed how Vici's playing. But I think they rely on their supports quite heavily. They rely on Doom for ROTK, and ROTK has been playing pretty solidly, but again, they like to get the Razor for the stable mechanism. I do think they like to farm their hard carry a bit more and whether it be a void or a morphling as Tyler is a bit more of a farming carry and that seems to be working out pretty well in the group stages as that sort of four protect one or three protect two strategy has been working out pretty marvelously thus far. So how will these trends change? I do expect these three teams to remain near the top but I expect Alliance to make a bit more of a vault. I think Cloud9 will make a bit more of a drop. Titan has been playing really, really well, but I can't really see them holding up too much longer. They still have to play against some of the top teams, whether it be DK, uh, they beat Navi, Titan beat Navi. So Titan have been leading a lot of the top Western teams, but they haven't really been tested against some of the top Chinese teams. You know, I think they might have beaten Newbie as well. I can't be sure. Liquid, they got rid of a lot of the top Chinese teams at the very first day, but they've been struggling against some of the more familiar teams where they might know their play style a bit more just because they've been playing against Liquid in online tournaments and things of that nature. <clears throat> so I'd expect these two teams to drop off a bit, these two teams to jump up a bit more, Titan maybe to drop off a bit, but so far for the top eight, it looks like it's going to be Vici, DK, IG, EG, Navi, and I think Alliance will make a bit more of a comeback. And the last place, who knows? It could be anybody, as the playoff matches are ridiculous. So, looking at the most played heroes again, 
We've seen that Skyrath Mage's win rate has dropped off precipitously. He had a 60% win rate in day one, and then teams realized, let's just build BKB, guys. And then Skyrath's just like, well, shit. And Skyrath really seems to be working well with heroes who can synergize well with whether it be a Barret or where you drag with the lasso and then immediately blow somebody up. The Void, where you catch some newcomers here, then immediately blow somebody up. Or a Clockwork from time to time. Same concept, similar design, but once Skyrath gets BKB'd on, he really can't do too much. And we've seen Brewmaster just build that BKB. They go in, they don't really care about the Skyrath Mage. They alt, Skyrath Mage gets brought down because he's so damn squishy. And once team gets BKB, Skyrath is actually almost useless. He feeds gold, he's squishy. He does have high base wound speed, but he doesn't really have the best range for a lot of... Well, he has good range, but for auto attacks, his range is not super good. Low HP, low armor, he does get picked off quite a bit. Razor has been holding strong. Again, very strong anti-carry, very stable pick for either a 1v1 offlane versus safe lane matchup. A mid matchup, he can hold his own against mostly anybody. So, Razor been looking pretty strong, and I expect that trend to continue. Skyth might receive a bit less attention, unless there might be a Brewmaster in the game. Shadow Shaman is one night I predicted, has or I predicted Shadow Shaman, or I didn't predict. I said Shadow Shaman has been the most influential hero, and I think that's been holding true. And I think teams will recognize this and start banning it out more, especially against the Eastern teams. So. Expect to see more bans on Shao Shaman, especially if the Eastern team is on the dire. And I think you might have to prioritize banning out Shao Shaman along with Lycan in the first two bans. Otherwise, those Chinese teams know better than any other team how to make usage of the Shao Shaman. But in response, Doom has sort of been receiving a bit more win rate as well. Doom, of course, is Doom. He's ridiculous. He has Doom. He never gets shut down in terms of gold. He gets a blink dagger, he shuts down somebody. In the late game, he can get a refresher or an agony, he shuts down two people. He is pretty bonkers in general to deal with. And another hero who's been making a bit more of an upswing. He had a lowish win percentage at the beginning, but I think these past games he's really made a pretty big impact has been Void as that Chronosphere, especially with the Aghanim's build, you go Midas into Aghanim's and then you can just fight whenever you want. And he synergizes very well with Skyrath Mage. Still, I'm not the biggest fan of offlane Void. It's been working out pretty well, but I don't know if teams are punishing it appropriately. So I do think Faceless Void win rate will drop, but Chronos here is just so damn good that he will always remain a top tier pick. Wraith King has sort of been seen as a semi-void counter because he just comes right back to life if you blow everything up on him. You know, Enigma has been holding strong as well. Barreter, not banned nearly as much, but still holding strong, holding steady. And these Morphling picks mostly with Vici and Fnatic playing him to reasonable effect. So I'm just going to talk about some more of the teams again and a couple more of my observations. Cloud9's draft in these in the past several games have been very mixed in my opinion. Sometimes they like to get some weird strategies like a Clink's safe lane Marana farm and then the safe lane Marana goes Midas into Lincoln's and the Clink's just runs around, doesn't go Orchid and ultimately does not provide too much of anything. Uh, Kalan also picked up a Void a couple of times, but it's not been too successful. So it seems like Cloud9, if they don't manage to get their early game aggression going... Oh, another thing I want to talk about with Cloud9 is they've been picking Chen a lot more, and Chen is not doing well whatsoever. I think Cloud9 picked him at least two times. They lost both of them. And I think the only victory with Chen was at the Alliance, as Nabi did lose a Chen in another game. So. I think Cloud9, if they avoid the Chen and avoid making some interesting draft decisions, they might be in decent shape, but they still have a lot of tough competition ahead of them. Meanwhile, teams like Navi have been experimenting with the heroes like Sniper EG always have a very stable draft. They're just so versatile. They've been picking Razor a lot for RTZ. And uh, Fnatic, I thought their biggest problem in terms of their slide, they were 3-2, and, and then they would drop to 4-5, and five, so a really, really poor day for Fnatic. But I think the biggest problem with their draft is that they don't really know what to do with Era. And I think that's what's costing them. They picked some utility-ish safe laners, whether it be the Tide Hunter. They picked him a couple times. Uh, they picked the Centaur for him once, and that worked deep reasonably well. But I think Era ultimately does flourish the best if he's given a farming hero. And I think the only sort of utility hero that he does best with 
is the centaur more than the tide because he can fight a lot more with centaur with the blink dagger and the double edge compared to the tide where he can only fight you know once every 150 seconds or you fight with the ravage rather than doing that so if that can sort of figure out how to utilize error, error still has been playing pretty well from what I've seen then I think Fnatic might be able to turn the ship around. So I'm just going to look over to some of tomorrow's games and give you my take. Navi versus Navi US, Navi should take that. BT versus DK, traditionally this is a heavily DK favored matchup. Even though a lot of interviews, DK say, oh, we always lose to VT in scrims. In the tournaments, DK always beats VT, and I think that trend will continue. But and knock BT to their second loss. Fnatic versus IG. Fnatic put on interesting performances against Eastern teams. Sometimes they can crush them with their early aggression. Sometimes they get crushed. So this can be a coin flip. But IG, it comes down to if they're dire, they get Shadow Shaman. They exploit that better than any other team. And we'll see if Fnatic can sort of recognize that trend and beat it. And if they can, they might be in good shape. But I think IG should have a significant edge. LG versus Alliance on should be able to win this. LG like to fire man quite a bit, and that doesn't work against Alliance when they do like to ride up, but the thing about Alliance is that they don't always ride it up as if they did that, then they'd just be utterly predictable. They like to go for some early game fights, and when push comes to shove, if they're behind, then they will ride it up, but teams have been bending out the nature spot very frequently, forcing Bulldog on heroes like Doom, and he's been forming magnificently, especially today with Doom, so... We'll see if Alliance can actually take a game off of the Chinese team or if they're going to fall. And if Alliance lose many more games, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. They might not wake it to the key arena at this rate. Empire vs. Cloud9. Um, Cloud9, I think, does have the edge in more ways than one. I think Cloud9 traditionally do very well against Empire, whether it be on the online tournaments or on land environments. As Empire do fight well, but I think Cloud9 are just a bit more efficient than Empire. And that efficiency can give them the edge in fights. DK vs Titan. This is a bit of a coin flip as Titan has been putting on a strong performance against a lot of Eastern teams. But again, this is going to come down to Radiant vs Dire in my opinion. And for the most part, I think Dire have had a pretty strong edge with the Chinese scene in general. Arrow vs Fnatic. Fnatic should be able to take this, although Arrow has been putting up a hell of a fight. EG vs Mouse. Mouse is going to continue to spiral out of control. They might not even place in the money if they place in the bottom two, and that would just be an unmitigated disaster after all of their strong performances leading up to TI4. Empire vs LGD, I think Empire can exploit LGD's team fight focus, and Empire, they have some matches that they should be able to win, and they might be able to make it into consideration for the next stage, which is going to be the playoff rounds into the best of threes. So, game still got forward. It's going to be EG vs Vici. And traditionally, I think EG hold a slight edge, but Vici have just been playing out of their minds this tournament. And I think this is going to be another game, Rain vs. Dire. If you give the Chinese the Dire side with the Shadow Shaman or a Lycan or something of that nature, then they'll exploit that better than any other team in existence. EG usually match up pretty well against the Chinese teams for the most part, but it's going to come down to the draft, and PBD is such a strong drafter. And EG, they have played relative pretty well for the most part in terms of getting them back into very strong contention for just getting to key arena. If not top two, then definitely top eight. And it looks like they're going to remain in that place. So this is going to be the highlight matchup for this round. The highlight matchup for this round is going to be Cloud9 versus Empire in my opinion. And the highlight matchup for this round is going to be VG versus DK. Teams to look out for. It's going to be Titan. Can they keep up the momentum? I think they've been sort of surprising teams a bit as they're one of the most pleasant surprises along with Liquid and we'll see if they can continue that momentum as their opponents are reasonably tough today or going on into tomorrow but they have matches that they should win as well. Meanwhile teams that are going to continue to spiral control I think Navi US as well as Mouse and LGD and Arrow. Not very bold predictions, but predictions nonetheless. But this is going to be the match of tomorrow. Navi vs. DK and Alliance vs. Cloud9. And series 23 is going to be a monster, and that is going to be the series you're going to have to check out. As Alliance traditionally do very well against Cloud9, but Cloud9 always play them very tough. 
So we'll see how the teams shape up after tomorrow. Again, I do think that we might see a bit of movement by Empire and Fnatic upwards. We're going to see a bit of movement downwards for Titan as well as Liquid. A bit of movement upwards by the Alliance. A bit of movement downwards by Cloud9. And some stability among these top five. They are going to all remain in the top five. So that's going to be the end of these predictions. For the most part, this TI has had a lot of strong games, but we're seeing a bit of repetition. We're seeing a lot of Void every game. We're seeing a lot of Razor every game. I like Razor, but seeing him every game is getting quite boring as well. Seeing a lot of picks revolving around team fights, which is not too exciting. And that's why I'm a fan of Empire, because they like to fight, but they also like to fight when they don't pick those ultimate based heroes. So, you know, TI4 has some great games, but still. It's showing that although there is a very, very diverse meta, we are seeing a sort of clear pick ban focus. Not really Sky with Mages, he has been falling off because the team's been dealing with him, but these heroes up until the Ancient Apparition are going to be very relevant as this, team, as this tournament continues on. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Keep enjoying TI4, guys.